Welcome back. Still watching Business Morning live on Channels Television. Now to our next uh, conversation. Major markets are coming off a punishing year that brought eye-watering losses uh, for investors. As we head into 2023, uncertainty hangs uh, in the air with central bankers ready to raise rates even more to tame inflation. Now, uh, let's find out how you can, uh, your personal uh, investment strategies to use for the year 2023 that will help you uh, create wealth regardless of the uncertainties. We have Dr. Stephen Akintayo, uh, MD, GTEx uh, uh, Holdings, and the uh, founder, Stephen Akintayo uh, Foundation, join us uh, via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's good to see you again. Uh, good How to, are you doing good to see you as always. <laughs> So yeah, your, your foundation recently launched a $5 million fund for five years to support 1,000 SMEs. Tell us about, uh, about this and uh, what inspired the creation of this fund. Okay, um, so uh, thank you for having me once again. Um, we started our foundation 15 years ago. We used to work with orphans. A different outreach program for orphans. And then later on, we started this Magdayo Bursaries scheme. Uh, and then uh, during COVID, we saw the impact on SMEs. So we started this Instagram pitch competition where we're giving people 500,000 to a million naira. And in the last two years, we've seen the impact of that. In fact, one of the winners of the 500, um, a thousand naira was a shoemaker, a female, sh you know, shoemaker. She went on to become first runner up at a reality TV show called Titan, where they even give twenty million dollars naira. So we've seen the impact of this. We felt, can we institutionalize it and make it something more well structured? And can we work towards giving up to uh, a thousand um, SMEs in the next five years? So twenty twenty three. We'll be giving 24, 2024 will be giving 48, 2025 will be giving 120 SMEs. Like that, it will get to 2027, which is the highest year of over 500 uh, recipients for that year. Uh, you did mention the, the structure there. Uh, give us a, a breakdown you know, of how these funds will be uh, given out in terms of percentage. Yeah, so. Um, I, I think I just mentioned that in terms of breakdown of uh, how people will be getting it, but it's a $5,000 grant as for SMEs. And um, the goal ultimately is to be able to accelerate the numbers of our winners gradually, because we also want to perfect the model. The model currently is that they have to go to www.stevactilefoundation.org to register and we have 12 various categories. We just announced yesterday the two top winners for the month of January. Uh, and the month of January was for agriculture. We have Nutri, Boom, uh, and no, uh, Fino Coconut. Uh, the lady makes um, you know, different types of products from coconut. And, and then we have y TY Foods. Uh, she does daily foods and using uh, technology to be able to deliver it to people's home. Uh, so those are the two winners. So we still have 11 different fields um, to cover for the year. So every month we're announcing two winners at uh, the end of this year. And the next year we'll be having uh, every month four, four winners. And then 2025 we have every month 10, 10 winners. 2026 every month uh, uh, 2020 winners. And then 2027, 20, I think we'll be having like 50 winners every month. And obviously, you know, from 2022, we know uh, liquidity has not been uh, easy. So I'm wondering, how are you able to manage all of this and, and generate the funds to create the support for, for SMEs, SMEs? Well, um, I mean, we for us is that I do a lot of, uh, I have, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, so a lot of what comes in since inception from my coaching program, I've written, uh, now I'm adding three more books to my 37 books. On uh, my birthday, which is this coming Saturday, 28th of January, I earn every day from that coaching, mentorship, a lot comes into that. And I put majority of the funds back into the foundation. We also have friends and families who always support the foundation. And then we have the G-Text uh, homes, which is a real estate company 
that has decided to put in a portion of the proceed from our 1,000 housing units, uh, which is also going to grow to about 25,000 housing units by the year 2035. So a portion of what comes in from that is going to support the Steve Actel Foundation so that we're able to push this project. Ultimately, I mean, we started as a small company as well with just $10. And, you know, we understand what it means to, to start a business, to have a small business and struggle. If I, I posted yesterday when I was announcing the two winners for January that I believe that when I meet God, I will tell him that Nigerian entrepreneurs must have an automatic ticket to heaven. But they've already been through <laughs> hell here or not. But they are Nigerian entrepreneurs. So I, you know I can imagine, thinking? yeah. It's, it's, it's been quite a <laughs> grueling year. That's 2024. And obviously, 2023 is already starting off um, quite uh, topsy-turvy. But obviously, your, your birthday coming up uh, Saturday. Happy birthday in advance. And I wish you on that day, too. But, you know, moving forward now, the, is this grant just for startups or, you know, existing business owners? And uh, how can people actually uh, take advantage of this? Beautiful. So the grant is for uh, startups, but that have demonstrated that the market needs their services and the market is willing to pay, right, for the value uh, service or product that they are offering in whatever small scale. We don't want companies that are already quite big do not need to apply. We had one of the uh, applicants, she made it to the top 10 but she wasn't eventually picked among the top two because our business was already doing, I think, uh, over 20 million a year. And we felt that, I mean, yes, everybody needs money. Even <laughs> we need money. We're trying to build, you know, 25,000 houses. We need money. We're trying to sell. So everybody always needs money. You never have enough. But this grant is for more of those who are just starting. They've demonstrated the business work. We don't want ideas. Ideas in the air. Everybody has ideas. Demonstrate the idea first. Let it be that you've shown that people are willing to pay for the service or product you're offering. Then you are the kind of person to apply. And you just need to visit www.stevenakitayafoundation.org and you select which of the category that fits into the type of business you do. And you go ahead and, and apply and hopefully... You make it to the top 50. Uh, the top 50 will be announced on uh, our foundation and my personal Instagram page. Your pitch video will be uploaded. So this is also a way of promoting these businesses. And then we shrink to the top 10. The top 10 will now have a one-on-one -on -one pitch with me and a judge who is an expert in the field for that month. And then we'll pick the top two. I'm sure a lot of these contestants will be uh, quite nervous, you know, given all this uh, pitches, like being on Dragon's uh, Den mm -hmm. at this point. <laughs> but but for, yeah, for, for many, you know, 2023 is a pivotal year in Nigeria's economic history. You know, people have come into uh, the year with questions, aspirations, hopes and dreams. As a, as a personal finance coach, how do you think people can grow their personal finance uh, this year you know, obviously, the, the uncertainties are still there, you know, for 2023. Absolutely. I mean, it is real. I mean, we, we, we just heard uh, Microsoft is about to lay off. We have Amazon has done 18,000. Um, Google has done. Um, um, Twitter did earlier last year. And I think Apple is about to do because, I mean, the CEO of Apple announced 40% pay cut. So when CEOs start talking like that, they are trying to say, oh, I, I, I was affected first before you say <laughs> I sucked you. But I think the first thing that I advise anyone is that do not panic. You know, fear is false evidence appearing real. However, do not discard the realities. It's going to be a tough year. You might lose your job this year. And I mean, when you look at also our own CBA just raising interest rates, it means a lot of people in the manufacturing sector will have to start laying off people. Uh, so it's, it's definitely going to be a tough year, no doubt about that. But what can you do, right, in terms of your own personal income? And I tell people, I say, you have to also on, look at yourself as the CEO of you incorporated. There is the company you work for, or there is the company you own, and then there is you as an individual, and there is issues around your own personal finance. The first thing I would advise you to do is to have some form of uh, uh, insurance for yourself. 
that if anything happened, there is something that will keep coming in while you try and figure out whether you're trying to get a new job, whether you're trying to restructure your business. You want to make sure such exists. Here in Dubai, for example, they announced a fantastic project where every employee uh, gets an insurance for, I think, a dollar 47 cents. And if you lose your job for three months, you're going to be getting your salary steady for the next three months. And these are, I mean, insurance company organized things like that way back in Nigeria as well. So don't say, oh, that's why I love Dubai. You can do that in Nigeria, whatever else, personally, where you have structures. Number two, begin to think of multiple investment opportunities, not necessarily multiple business opportunities. Because many of us, our so-called side also, is already competing with our career and is even the reason why we're not doing well in our career. But there are a lot of investment opportunities where you put in money and money go work for you rather than working for money, right? I always tell people you must have four sources of income. One must be a job. The second can be self-employed. And that takes me to number three. How do you monetize your own skill? So I've written 40 books now. I end every day on Amazon, my website, just from the book. And the day I die, I will even sell more books than while I'm alive. Okay, so it's transgenerational. <laughs> um, I am from speaking. I am from coaching people, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I am from working with companies uh, to, to restructure their business and, and, and uh, their marketing, but get their sales team. So how do you look at how, how many years you've been in business? How do you monetize that skill such that you have some form of self-employment aside your job? And then you have two other angles that can now be uh, investment vehicle where money works for you and something keeps coming in. Those will be, so I mean, we can go on and on and on. Right. Stop, 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 Obviously, stop. <laughs> multiple streams, That that's that's fantastic, you know, any day, having as much as possible. But, you know, obviously, every investor now is looking for, you know, where to uh, stash some of the, those uh, monies that they have, you know, laying on the side. And obviously, we've heard about real estate, you know, I mean, it's a big money market for investors. But as a stakeholder in this market now, you're, you're spread across Nigeria, Dubai, UK, uh, and the U.S. What do you foresee uh, for the real estate sector globally, and how can Nigerians partake, you know, in the benefits? Well, I, 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 it's a mix of good and bad. Uh, you know, depends on which, uh, you know, which country. Um, for the U.S., for example, we have seen uh, slow growth as a lot of people go back to work. What had happened during COVID-19 was a situation where people were in New York, mm -hmm. California were able to move into a place like, let's say, Dallas, right? So what they were using to pay for a one-bedroom could give them a three- to five-bedroom in Dallas. And remember, there was remote work. So they could work from Dallas, earn big salaries, you know, with their company in New York or California. But what has happened is even some of the companies that have laid off, many of them laid off the remote. Facebook are laid off a lot of people working on on uh, their, you know, re, you know, who are remote workers. And that's the first set of people that are having to go. So you are seeing more people, you know, who are, of course, doing real work, I mean, in, in office work, having to come back to major cities uh, and then go back to, you know, smaller apartments and things like that. So, however, there are a lot of more opportunities. So if you are selling one-bedroom, studio, two-bedroom, in those sectors, you're going to do very well. Uh, in those countries, rather. Dubai has been doing so well since last year. It's still doing well. Um, there's been a lot of Russia money coming in, Ukraine. A uh, couple, couple from Lebanon and some other European countries have been coming to Dubai and investing heavily. So Dubai is just, you know, milk and honey since last year and up to now. So uh, rent is up. People, you know, if you're a real estate investor, you're just making it big time here uh, in Dubai. In Nigeria... What I keep saying is that you can hardly ever find a crash in the real estate sector. There may be some slow growth, but you can't have a crash. And the reason is because the housing deficit is so high that no matter what, you still need more houses. Um, you can't go wrong with real estate, particularly in Nigeria with high inflation. One of the edge against inflation is real estate. You can't go wrong with it. You want to look at land banking, you want to look at rental income, uh, these are sectors that will always yield. But of course, 
get professionals to cancel you. Location is very key. Um, but this is the year, no matter what, we're entrepreneurs. Right. We always go a way out. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess with all the uncertainty, uh, uncertainties, there's still opportunities uh, lying out uh, there. I want to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Stephen Akinta, your MD, uh, GTEx uh, Holding. It was great having you on the program today. Thank you, Father.